Hello, and welcome back to another 3D Hangout. You got myself, Noah Wes. I'm a designer here at Adafruit, and joining me every week is my brother, Pedro. What's up, everybody? I'm Pedro Wes, creative tech here at Adafruit, and every week we come to share 3D printing designs featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right. This is a show where we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics to smash them together to make inspirational projects. Pedro, what's on the show today? Coupon code for this week is Bath Bomb in celebration of the Hallmark holiday for your SO significant other. Oh, pretty cool. That's what Oh. Pretty cool project for this week. DIY 3D printed molds for bath bombs. Use bath bomb for 10% off on oh, your man. order. The only place on the internet where you can get free shipping, the free printer shipping. order, fill in, and of course, a lovely assortment of all the cool electronic breakup boards. That's right. Be sure to check out adafruit.com slash free to see all the uh, the fine details and things. This changes up every so often, every month or so, so we'd like to just, if you ever want to check it out, just go to adafruit.com slash free. That's right. We okay. still have our um, not free, but same sh same day delivery in the NYC. If you're in the Manhattan area, mm -hmm. check it out. If you order before 11 a.m., you'll get it by the end of the day at uh, 5 p.m. So we're around there. Wow, that's pretty pretty crazy. It's working out. Eight for daily, Pedro. What's that about? The newsletter every morning. Get nice little bite sized tip info in your mailbox on biohacking, electronics, maker business business. And business. 3D printing. Never yeah. Check it out. No spam will never sell your info. Yeah, you have to sign up for it. So you got to go to adafruitdaily.com. That's where uh, where you sign up and pick. If you got to pick your topics. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's. We're gonna jump in with what are you prototyping this week, um, and we'll do the other segments and stuff as uh, as we go on. But let's go ahead and jump into the overhead. No, you got another very cool, lovely Valentine's themed. Project. Yeah, I'm really liking this project. Um, I got inspired by a design on you Imagine, and that was actually inspired by another design where this gentleman made a uh, low polygon heart, and he used 3D printing to make a mold, and then he used uh, concrete to mm. make like a really thing. But anyway, I thought it'd, it'd be cool to make my own version of it and sort of um, you figure out a way how to do dual extrusion color without without the dual extruder with just a single extruder. So uh, this is actually printed with one extruder and just using the uh, the pause Z height feature that's uh, that's on our Flashforge Creator Pro. But you could also just manually uh, change out the filament. So this is actually a two-part box. It's very thin. It's just two parameters uh, thick, and um, it's it's using two different, uh, three different types of filament on this one. But the cool thing is that I'm printing the very first layer. I actually set the slicing settings pretty clever here. So the first layer is it's saying. I just print one layer and then put uh, a triangular infill for this and a honeycomb infill for this one. And then you can play around with the different infill percentages to get either a more dense or, or a bigger pattern. And um, then I switch out the, the filament. So this is transparent or translucent PLA. And then I just swap out uh, for, for red, or it can be any other color. But the cool thing is you can see right through it because it's just one layer thick so it looks like it's a single layer so that's that's really clever I actually got that idea from Andrew Stout uh, who's on Instagram and works for RigidBot so that so, so thanks for that uh, Andrew for, for getting inspiration there and this brown here is actually coffee PLA which gives it such a really cool like um, it's a nice little translucent color yeah, right? accent it's translucent as well so when you shine it against light it looks really cool but this is going to be a future uh, layer by layer project I really want to show you guys how easy it is uh, to make this out of one sketch. It is just one sketch. It's parametric sketch driven so you can modify it and everything gets updated to it. Um, and I, I really like how fast it prints too because um, it's just two perimeters thick. So it's one millimeter thick. Um, but you can make it thicker if you want and everything will just update to it. It's got this little lip connector. I've done a tutorial on, on how to make these lip connectors before using an offset which works out really well. Uh, it has a tolerance offset of 0.1 millimeters which makes it uh, pretty good. Um, it's sturdy. Yeah, it, it, uh, Kirby G on Instagram said it kind of looks like the 3D Hubs logo, and I was like, yeah, it does, it totally does. It also looks like the, um, or at least this side, it also looks like the YouTube gaming app. So let me guys, let me know what you guys think about it. Um, I will upload it on Thingiverse and make the file available for you guys, but I am gonna do a layer by layer on that. So that is pretty cool. Very cool little Valentine's I like themed it. box. You put some chocolates or maybe a ring inside here. Or a here. feather board or something. You could totally put some standoffs in there and make Very some cool. cutouts for... Ooh, a nice uh, little glowy light, yeah. Yeah, make it glow or something. Very but, cool. Yeah, pretty cool. All right, guys, uh, that's 
this week's prototype. Um, working on some other stuff in the background that we'll share next week. Mm -hmm. So if you want to pick up some filament or a printer, 10% off, bath bomb. Z. <laughs> Use that during checkout. The code expires at 11.59 p.m. tonight. Eastern so time. Definitely take advantage of that. OK. Layer by layer, moving right along. This week's layer by layer. Um, I wanted it to be this, but instead I actually already prepared this one a little bit earlier this week. Uh, so this is uh, sort of a user-driven uh, suggestion. This was how do, how do you make uh, finger joints uh, in Fusion 360? So I figured out a cool workflow on how to make parametric cutter to make um, uh, parametric finger joints. So finger joints just are these interlocking things. If you want to cut up your parts, usually people ask, like, oh, that's too big for my printer. Well, you can cut it up into pieces. And to bring them back together, you can either just make a solid split cut, or you can do this cool intricate interlocking way. And it's, it's sketch driven. It's using a pattern so that, so that you can just apply two different um, sketch dimensions to it. So you can very quickly change the value. Say you want uh, your, your joints to be longer or, or wider. You can totally do that. And since it's a driven, since it's a pattern driven thing, you just do it one time and everything gets updated. So it's very parametric, uh, very flexible and adjustable. And um, that's just sort of one way I think uh, you could do finger joints. I recall, like the way yeah. that you can adjust the tolerance that um, for your a specific printer. So yeah, very or cool, material. very popular uh, technique that woodworkers use a lot. Yeah, totally. If you type in finger joints in Google, you're, you're not going to see finger joints. You're going to see like actual. <laughs> Finger joints. And of course, you could also modify this to make dovetails too, which is pretty much finger joint, but just with uh, different angles. Very so cool. that's this week's uh, Lair by Lair. Be sure to check it out. And um, it's a nice short one. I think it's like 10 minutes long. Pretty cool. OK, so that is this week's Lair by Lair. So we jump into the shop talk. We can take a look at some of the new materials we're testing out this week. Just got this in a fresh from the Netherlands <laughs> Color Fab new material engine. Yep, Mary might. orders us up some sample of this. Well, we got some light gray, black, silver metallic, and some dark gray to test out. So we're testing these on the Flash Forge and the Ultimakers. Okay. Um, first thing we notice when we unpack these, it doesn't include the, de the desiccants that usually comes with PLA. Desiccants. And, uh, maybe, yeah. so Is that the fresh should, silicon? Yeah, it should be able to absorb less um, moisture out of the air. So if we jump over to the overhead, we can take a look at some of the um, prints that we tested out. Of course, since we do electronics here, the very first test we're going to do are enclosures. enclosures yeah, um, so which is really what everybody should be testing instead of uh, statues, I believe. So, Noah, tell me what some of your first experiences was printing on the Flash Forge with the uh, BuildTac. It broke. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, this is very brittle material, in my opinion. Um, I printed this with the recommended settings, a little bit slower, about uh, 60 millimeters a second with a heated bed of 80 C. Um, I turned off the, uh, the fan because it recommends that you use a fan. If you're using active cooling, you want to set it down to 50% because 100% is a little bit much, I guess. Um, and it didn't just break in multiple parts. It broke right here, which is um, the little speaker grill. So that piece completely broke off. Uh, we got a crack here as well. And this one was the bigger part. So um, I think it adhered to the bed very, very well, too good to the point where it just broke. Now I've, um, with, now with BuildTac, it's... You didn't apply a lot of pressure to try to remove this, did no, you? No, I always do the same technique where you just slide your edge underneath this. And it's supposed to come off, but it, it, it just broke. So, uh, so that's a little unfortunate there. In terms of like the quality of the layer, bonding is pretty good. I mean, you can see it's pretty solid. Um, it wasn't too stringy. There's still a little bit here, but that's not that's nothing too too bad. I mean, PLA kind of does that, mm -hmm. but uh, it's work. it seems like uh, it's it's some pretty brittle stuff. Um, the 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 um, the striations here are, this isn't too bad. I did break off one of these guys here, so you can see here. That's what it's supposed to have these little things here. So the, it's a little fragile there. So the second time around, this is the second print, I leveled the bed so that it's um, so that it's not so tight on the bed. And you can see here, if I do a little bit of um, focus focusing, there. yeah. There you go. Take a look at that. You can see there's gaps there. Well, that's because I leveled it. I purposely leveled it that way so that it wouldn't be so 
uh, strong on the build tack, but uh, I still managed to break a piece here. So you can see there, there's a crack there. Uh, this part survived, but it's just not that good of a leveling on it. So uh, this one could work. Everything still matches out, like in terms of tolerances, like all the mounting holes are okay. Um, there's a little bit more cleanup here that I have to do, but it's not that bad. Um, so the fourth time around, um, I, I leveled it back again, and I added a little bit of uh, olive oil to the build tack, so, it's, so it has a little bit less of a sticky surface. And I still managed to break this piece off. Uh, this piece didn't break here, so that was okay. And um, there really isn't that much change of, of slice settings, um, other than t turning the fan completely off. I thought that might, uh, that might help a little bit. But that was my experience. So far, um, not that great. To be honest, yeah. So you uh, have everything to print has slower, a, right? You have to print slower. You have to use a heated bed. You have to turn off your fans. Yeah. So my experience was with was with the Ulti Maker, and I printed the bottom half of these. And I want to take a look at the bridging for this. Pretty much the same on the metallic gray, and this is the lighter gray. Um, I've not seen Get bridging closer. like this before, to where it didn't bridge until. Oh man, I can't even count how many layers. Too many layers up until it started to, turned into like a little, um, uh, yeah, like a triangle at the top there. Mm -hmm. And if you take a look too, I slowed this down to 40 millimeters a second, had the heated bed up at 60, and turned the fans completely off on the Ultimaker. And wow. you can see that it still has some striation here, which we almost never get on the Ultimaker. And then um, a lot of skipping along you know, just here, a um, mm -hmm. bunch around there. The metallic, um, when I was purging it, I could notice that the pigments were like sort of separating, so it looked kind of chunky as I was uh, just purging the nozzle to get, you know, all of the remaining PLA out. So it was a little, um, a little concerning there. And if you take a look at the bottom again, the, the extrusion width is usually pretty good on the Ultimaker 2 Pluses. It's nice and thick, so they're able to actually bond together. And I've never had it where they, you know, they were too thin to where they were. They had like gaps in between. I had the ex same experience with the um, hairiness here on the retraction. Um, hmm. With PLA, PHA, it's you know a little bit better than that. We printed these last time. Actually, I think it was a lot better. Yeah. Um, yeah. Over better. here we have comparison with. Uh, PHA. There was no cleanup on this, and it was not nearly as hairy as that. What printer? Oh, this is the Flash Forge. This is the Flash Forge, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the standoffs are pretty good. They're nice and strong on there. Um, again, I don't know if it's worth it to have to print so slow and still have a lot of deformities on no, um, <laughs> things like bridging and skipping. And then the bottom looks pretty good, though. The extrusion width on that was able to close everything. Yeah, that's a, that's a, it, you can't even see the build lines. It looks really great. Yeah. But again, um, having to slow something down, having to turn the heat on for the bed, which we almost never do for any of our prints. Yeah. Um, you know, we have like four spools of this. And actually, I think you were just looking at this one. <laughs> it just broke off. Yeah, I may have uh, handled it a little bit too much. But it was fairly easy to crack. Yeah, I mean, one of the things you were noticing, too, is that it's pretty flexible, huh? Yeah, it's a little more flexible than PLA, so it's not as rigid. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. PHA, PLA. Yeah, it's a little bit more rigid, yeah. Um, so, yeah, those are our initial testing with NGen. Um, mm -hmm. There was some uh, talk of it being able to be sand uh, nice and smooth, so we'll test out some sure. of that. And I guess we can try different temperatures, I guess printing maybe even slower, printing hotter. All of these are printing at... Uh, 235 degrees, so maybe yeah. we'll try bumping that, that up to 240 yep. and see if that solves any of those problems. Yep, this is just a little, we literally got it a couple days, yesterday? Mm -hmm. We got it yesterday. Yeah. So we, we had a full day of just printing out uh, this case here. Yeah, if you can take a look at the bridging on this. Yeah. Um, in my opinion, the light gray definitely performed a little bit better than the silver metallic. Yeah. So we'll definitely take a look at that. I didn't get any bridging here because there's just not, this part doesn't have any overhangs. So. Yeah. Uh, one of the colors that we didn't even I'm test sure. out yet was black. It's loaded, ready to go. So mm. 
It that's is. Right. Uh, we'll, we'll continue testing on that. But if that's you, our first look at Engine from ColorFab. Yeah, if you folks have any experience with it, please let us know um, what printer you have, what settings you're using. Where, any profiles you want to share? ColorFab has a great uh, ch graphical chart where they they tell you their recommended settings for and that's specific what we printers. Use, actually, and that's yeah. what we use. There's also a really nice review uh, from an author that runs, I think, that either a collaborator that runs the 3dprintingbeginners.com. We have it shared this week, uh, which is a pretty good overview. It, it looks pretty promising. Mm -hmm. Like, again, you were talking about finishing techniques, which is pretty good. Yeah. Um, but th th one of the cons was brittle failure, breakage. Yeah, that, that is one of the things that he highlights in there. Um, then again, uh, every time somebody tests something, it's always like a vase or something or a vase what, or something. It's never like... I think there was an enclosure. There was an enclosure right. too? Okay, for the actual sanding thing. Yeah, that was okay. an enclosure. But yeah, um, I think for statues and vases and things, busts, it might be a, a little bit better. So we still need to test that out. Mm -hmm. uh, for something like our Vernoy um, lampshade, perhaps that's worth of a test. That could be, that's nothing but bridging and overhangs yeah, and attraction. So traction. it'll be like really, <laughs> really interesting test. So one of the first things actually that I printed with the next gen, which surprised me, um, we shared this last week on the blog. It was this teeny tiny adorable little wrench. So I printed this on the M3D and it came out pretty good. Um, excellent uh, layer adhesion and all that. Uh, the only thing is that it fused because it definitely probably needs some horizontal compensation. Um, if I printed this like an ABS or something because of the shrinkage, oh, it'd be fine. It might have been fine. Um, this is PLA then. This is regular translucent red PLA that we have in the shop. Machine? Okay. Yeah. So I loaded this up. Um, didn't do any horizontal compensation on this, and it worked beautifully. I removed the little two support materials that are on each side of that, and I was surprised, um, definitely because of the, probably the shrinkage that goes on on this uh, that was able to uh, perform pretty good. So um, again, it's not the prettiest print. There are a, closer. let's see. Right there, there you go. So there's some skipping. Yeah, there's a bunch of skipping. That's the top layer, let's look at the bottom layer. And the bottom layer did not fare so well with the, um, right when it gets to the fillet parts. Yeah. So a lot, a lot of, of um, uh, sort of skipping and yeah and if you look on the bottom here when it was building this top layer here closer. it right. was actually uh, not fused at first so it was sort of just floating around and so I was sure this was gonna fail so uh, surprising I was quite surprised that it actually finished and yeah um, it is a little bit slippery if you can tell it is kind of shiny and they were touting its properties for being able to use with mechanical uh, moving parts and I think it will work with that because it's so far we haven't seen any like sort of powdering um, Caused by you know friction and anything like that. So, so that's might be pretty friction. good for that. Yeah okay. uh, with PLA and um, ABS you definitely would see uh, like the powdery um, sort of uh, residue start to form mm. as a uh, friction is caused between up. yeah between parts Okay, but it might be pretty good for that, so we'll continue testing that. Different parts. And we'll release this as a time lapse Tuesday for next week, so you can see the printing of that. So pretty good. Nice okay. little, sweet little um, Yeah, I like mini it's wrench. so cute. Yeah. I think he scaled this down too for the... Uh, for them 3D, yeah, yeah, I scaled this down to 90%. Just a tiny bit. Yeah. Okay. But it's uh, fused in there. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, the PLA, I think it expands just a little bit. When I see it coming out of the uh, extruder, or the nozzle, yeah, it looks like it expands, but uh, pretty good for that. All right, um, those are some good tests so far. Um, again, let us know if you folks have any experience with N Gen from ColorFab. Yeah, so uh, one of the in the review for uh, at a three printing for beginners, they were saying that the risk shrinkage uh, you would have to scale it up to like one hundred three percent to avoid good. that. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's very. It's, it really depends <laughs> on your part, bless you, because. Um, all my all the components fit in here without any think, problems, yeah. no tolerance problems. So it, it was good for that specific part. Very cool. All right, so well that's this week's shop talk, folks. Testing out new filament and things. All right, this week's community, community makes. makes. Let's do that. Um, this is where we highlight some uh, some makes on the community, making our projects and making new projects as well. So let's take a look at that. The first up, we got a Raspberry Pi zero enclosure. 
printed by DIY Gallery on Thingiverse. Uh, this was printed with red PLA on his row stock max from C me and C. Uh, printed out his resolution of 0.25, 20% infill. It came out pretty good. It looks really good, actually. Um, looks like everything fit. That's always a good thing to see. It looks like he printed the, the version with the, um, the pins. Little, little pins and standoffs. I've heard people have, you know, sometimes they break off and things, and you know, you gotta dial in your settings so that they're they're really strong. Uh, next up is another Pi Zero case. This time from Side Clone, printed on a Da Vinci Pro uh, with a very fine resolution. I'm thinking 100 microns maybe. Um, simple file, simple print. It's, it's good awesome. to hear. Uh, he has yet to buy the screws yet, so um, hopefully the screws work out. out the pin I version. like the screws better because um, you're, you're, it's a nice you're less firm likely. Oh yeah, holding and yeah, in you're case it breaks, break. you don't have to like increase your infill just to get those pins to be strong or slow it down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next up, this is from Viz Tree on Thingiverse. Printed out um, the enclosure for the Mac Pi, which I'm just dying to update. I need more time. It's Another coming. Time. Yeah, it's coming. I'm dying to make this one with the Pi too. Um, so yeah, that's really cool. It looks like he got the software working. Uh, it was a pain in the butt for me to get this working. I remember <laughs> trying to get that emulator working. It was like, yeah. oh my god. So shout out to you, sir. Next one is from uh, iJed on Thingiverse, who printed out our uh, Raspberry Pi face case. And he printed it on a RepRap i3 Pro B. He used a raft, no supports, uh, 0.3 layer height and 20% infill. He uh, used OctaPi and Cura for the slicing. It's pretty good. No yeah. blemishes on there for using a raft. Really I think cool. that's pretty cool. Yeah. So it works out well. It's a good, good little first time project for an Octopi rig. Yeah, it looks like he's using the case as the Octopi rig itself. Okay. Let me double check this. Sure, it's all good. Okay, that's all good. Next up, this is from Kirby G. If you guys haven't already, check out Kirby on YouTube. He's got a channel. He's making uh, content for uh, 3D printing, uh, making stuff. Um, programming, programming. Got some cool car mods in there. Yeah. Uh, so this week he, uh, it's a more of a tutorial, uh, software tutorial on using Fusion 360 to, uh, to make uh, a little fridge magnet, Wisconsin, and then he brings that because uh, he he extrudes it out and it's pretty flat, so he brings it in the mesh mixer, and then uses the make some pattern like terrain tool on there yeah. to, to make this little cheesy um, cheese. It's like these little balls instead of using the. Um, the double edge, he uses the balls one. Mm -hmm. And then he shows the, you how to use the uh, horizontal compensation yeah. to be able to uh, snap those two parts together. Yeah, yeah cool. that's that's Simplify 3D. That's the only slicer I know of that has horizontal compensation. So it's a really good roundabout way to make this. It's a really good workflow. Printed on his, his lulz bot. And um, check, it, check him out on YouTube. He's doing really good stuff. Make sure to hit the like button and, and all that good stuff. Um, and then next, oh yeah, he actually used a cre cut to cut the. Uh, Cool. With the magnet, so that's pretty, pretty cool. cool. It's a good wow. use of different, uh, nice different uh, tools. Uh, next up, Aiden X Y Z Aiden on Thingiverse and YouTube and the like. Um, Back with another soft robotic this time for me arm, arm grouper. Gripper. Yeah, it's a, the me arm is like a, I think it's an open source kit for robotic arm. So you made a, a soft robot attachment. Be sure to check out Aiden on YouTube and Thing, uh, Thingiverse and Instagram, um, so you can see uh, what he's working on. And he frequently stops by in the show and tell, too. Uh, I think he put it on his, on his replicator, his uh, mini, at uh, different layer heights. And yeah, good good uh, good nice. use of uh, silicone casting. Good stuff. And then, um, sort of Thanks what we're watching. Mm -hmm. Richard Horn, better known as Rich Rap. Um, he's been putting out some really cool content, too, on YouTube. So be sure to check him out on YouTube. This week, he made... Um, he's experimenting with making uh, food safe silicone molds, 3D printed um, positive and making a negative uh, using food safe silicone to make chocolates. This is the Trio chocolate that was um, one of his favorite chocolate bars growing up as a kid in the UK. And um, the company who makes it has stopped making it, but they're going to remake them uh, apparently. In March, I so think you watch the video and it tells you his sort of workflow that he, that he used. Um, it's actually not just chocolate, it's chocolate, caramel, and a biscuit. Mm -hmm. So that's what Very I like delicious. about this. Uh, we made chocolate molds uh, two years ago or something like that with the silicone yeah. molds, but I really like this because he's sort of layering all these together to recreate um, his favorite childhood yeah. chocolate, you bring it back to life. You can see him eating it later. That's really fun. <laughs> Good stuff. Okay, and then the last one, Andrew Bevelheimer. Check him out on YouTube. He has uh, a couple of project videos and 
uh, some tutorials on Onshape, how to use Onshape. If you're interested in Onshape, check out Andrew Bevelheimer's YouTube channel, 3DDC. Uh, last week, he shared uh, an Arduino-based robot. It's very awesome. It's using the, the Adafruit, one of the Adafruit shields. I'm thinking this is the motor shield um, uh, to, to make this pretty cool robot. The, the entire chassis is 3D printed. Uh, with a couple of screws and things, a caster ball, two two wheels, and a couple of servos, I believe. But he's, you know, if you want more information on this project, be sure to check out his ins uh, Instructables uh, tutorial as well. So, pretty cool stuff. Thanks for sharing, guys. Um, I think that's this week's uh, all of this week's makes. A lot of cool projects this week, and every other and every week. So thank you guys for sharing your stuff. Um, Everything's linked below and on the blogs, too. So be sure to subscribe to those channels for some more awesome stuff. Very cool. OK. Um, let's do Q&A now. Choop, 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 choop. We need a song for Q&A. Uh, this week, we got a couple of questions and comments. We answer them every week, gather them up, and let's just jump into them. First question is from Joseph. Asking on the uh, Super Game Pie project, hello, I'm wondering uh, something, what I, I don't understand from the guide is how to power up the Raspberry Pi without using the USB. Yeah, that's a good point. So um, uh, if you just Google uh, Raspberry Pi GPI phones, we actually printed this little guide out just so we don't have to stare at our phones mm -hmm. while we're printing. And you can also get a very handy, I think it's like vinyl or something, Yeah. Uh, cardstock. They're at the Adafruit shop. Yeah, so we got a little, uh, a, 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 a I don't know what to call it. What do you call it? A, a paper oh. guide thing. <laughs> it tells you all the pinouts, the labels. So you, you can see here that the, 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 these two pins are 5 volts as a ground. So you can actually power it through there. Mm -hmm. And specifically in the project, well, n well, most of the other projects, not the Super Game Pi projects, but if you're ever using a Pi TFT, we have a breakout, a GPIO breakout. So you can actually just wire into that and the power it's distributed evenly through that way, um, but yeah, it's there's there's multiple power pins. There's three of them that you can choose from um, to power up your Pi, so you don't have to use USB. Um, so yeah, if you want to um, uh, check this out, of course, on the, the Adafruit shop, and um, there's tons of of these type of uh, little helpers helper uh, pinouts that yeah. you can that you can check out too. Okay, so that was that one. Thank you for the question, Joseph. Next one is from Paul Goodyear on the last week's Hangout. Hey guys, do you know how to create a thread, metric or imperial, internal or external? I use uh, 123D design from Autodesk. That is pretty tricky to do. It's yeah, like it's pretty tricky. 3D. It's on parametric, and you got to do like the spiral. Yeah, um, you have to do a, co a lot of copy and pasting. Mm -hmm. um, it's rather difficult to do, but um, I definitely recommend checking out Fusion 360. Um, they have a built-in thread tool, so and they have tons of built-in uh, profiles for both imperial and metric, standard size, non-standard size. Um, I, I have a tutorial about it that I guess I'll link below. Um, if you check out my Lever Layer series, the playlist on the Adafruit channel, you'll you'll see that uh, tutorial. Um, you can use it for other things too, like uh, making. Uh, a twisty top, that's specifically what I'm making, but it can also be used for all sorts of other things. So be sure to check that one out. Um, that's your best bet. And of course, we got a special download link, so you can give you uh, one year's free license with Fusion 360. I'd say it's longer than a year. It's uh, free uh, until you start making over $100,000. Yeah, so. and you can just renew the license after the first year, so mm -hmm. that's always good. So uh, there you go, Paul. Next one is from Kirby. It's a comment on last week's uh, Hangout. For the, for the Pi Girl 2 buttons, I'm wondering if you can copy the mounting holes in the PCB as the SNES controller, along with the PCB pad design, so you could just drop in the rubber pads in and a new printed PCB pad. Since the rubber pads alignment holes, uh, it would solve that alignment issue that the first Pi Girl project. Yeah, that is a really good. Um, idea, uh, since we've already started manufacturing our PCBs, it's a little too late in the game to do that, but I think for a future project, that would be a pretty good idea. Uh, and also, I wanted to know, uh, a couple, two weeks ago, I was mentioning, check out these rubber buttons. I asked Lamar to check them out and, and see if she, she can order some. 
apparently they are no longer being made. They're discontinued from DigiKey. So that's a bummer. And she said that you know it's kind of rare to get these elastomer style rubber tactile switch buttons. Mm -hmm. So that's unfortunate. So yeah, sounds we'll like a future dual yeah. extruded Ninja Flex and conductive filament project, maybe. Yeah, if it works out, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, good stuff, Kirby. Uh, Riley is asking on the uh, last week's Hangout, does the Fallout emulator have an internet browser? Uh, no, not that I know of. It's, um, it only does a couple things. It only has that map, uh, the OSM map data. So it pulls that in. And it has some of these inventories, but they're really blank. So it's really up to you guys to sort of expand it as much as you want. This was, of course, made by Graves in Sabas 1080 on uh, GitHub. But you're free to uh, check out the, the, the source. It's made with Pygame. So um, if you guys want to learn some Pygame and add to it, you're definitely encouraged, encouraged to do and so. free to do so. Uh, on last week's Hangout, uh, Con Whitfield said, uh, is the Pi TFT refresh rate that low, or is that an option? It seems to update very slowly. Yeah, on the Pi, uh, on pi the Pip Boy. That, right? Yeah, but it's really the Pip Boy. Um, the the Pip Boy Pi game uh, program is just running slow. I suppose. I guess you could optimize it some way to make it work well, but uh, the refresh rate. Uh, it's pretty good on the Pi TFT. Um, when you're when when you when you see like retro game and stuff, it's pretty good. Um, I think it's like 20 frames a second. I think yeah, you can make it a little bit faster. Yeah. I don't think it's optimized, so I think that's what you're seeing. It is kind of slow. It takes like it's, it feels like five frames a second or so. So it's really really slow. But uh, there you go. Okay. Next one is from Brian Blank on uh, last week's. Hang out. <laughs> I have an Octoprint question. I got an Octoprint set up with my Raspberry Pi 2 and my Flash Forge Creative Pro. I'm using the Raspberry Pi camera mounted on the left opening of the carrying handle with a 3D printed mount and enclosure. My PC is sharing the internet Wi-Fi connected with the Raspberry Pi via Ethernet. And when I view the control tab and see the camera on video, it's nice and it's smooth, it's real time. But if I view on a different device on the same network, then there's a lot of delay in the video and I see the extruder movements are skipping around because of the delayed frames. Is this something that it might be a problem viewing it over the network? Uh, do you have any tips on how I can work better, optimize my settings? I'm unfortunately limited to using Wi-Fi on the network, but I do have a pretty high-speed Wi-Fi. The issue also happens on my PC when I connect to a Wi-Fi dongle to the Pi instead of sharing the internet connection. So we've seen the exact same thing, only we're using only just the Wi-Fi connection. Yeah, only Wi-Fi um, dongle. We have one connect, like one of the laptops connected to it and only over Wi-Fi. Yeah. It is but buttery smooth. It's like yeah. 30 frames a second. You can see like every movement. But then as, as soon as I connect another laptop to it, like my phone or something like that, it immediately drops frames. Drops frames. Yeah. So maybe it's due to the Wi-Fi dongle that's on the Raspberry Pi. But um, you said that you're sharing it through a network connection, right? Or an Ethernet. Yeah, so it's not even the Wi-Fi dongle problem. Hmm. I don't know. It could be a limitation. It could just be a limitation in the software. But yeah, um, about you could. I haven't tried this, but I, you could try dropping the, the bit rate down. If you check out the, the, set, the settings in Octoprint, you have an option to change the bit rate. By default, it's 5K, I think, 500K, something like that. Mm -hmm. So maybe drop that by half and see if that works or not. Um, I have yet to try that out, but I, it's something worth trying. And worth yes. investigating. So I think that's uh, it. But we've experienced the same problems. OK, next up is from Gabriel G on the one seven, using 175 filament on Ultimaker 2. How about NinjaFlex? Can you use this with 175 NinjaFlex or 3 millimeter? So I've been tried 175 Cheetah on the uh, Bowdens on the Ultimaker. But that might work. 3 millimeter works perfectly for that. Yeah. So definitely check that out. And with a fast speed, right? Yeah. Actually, well, you can't check it out now. Uh, they said February, right? So, oh, uh, it's February. Uh, March? Soon. Okay, soon. so soon it'll be out, and we'll let you guys know when it is available. But yeah, I, I wouldn't try a regular Ninja Flex. Or even the Sunny Flex, yeah. yeah. Cheetah is the new black. Uh, yeah. <laughs> next, one, thanks, uh, next one is from George uh, Rubbles. Uh, could you please send me the G code you use? I'd like to see if I can make it into an STL file. I know I've did it once before. Not sure if I can do it again. And rather than try one of my own, why not try this, right? He's got his email, and let me know if it's possible. Thanks. Um, we'll upload the G code then to, uh, to Thingiverse, along with the 
or to the, 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 the product page there, project page on Thingiverse. Um, but yeah, that's interesting. So that way people can uh, get the STL instead of having to like remake all those supports. That'd be an interesting workflow. I'd like to figure out how to do that, how to reverse engineer it. So that's a good one. So we'll have a link below soon, George. Thank you for taking that up as an offer. That's a cool little project. Next one is from Dan and Alexander on uh, last week's Hangout. Uh, to John Paul's comment about the sword, you could also integrate a stiffer vibration sensor in there too with the code to change the color of the blade when you strike something. Perhaps also have the ching clashing sound play at the same time. Also, to toss it out there, has anyone tried making a Thurman using a real metal sword, having the sword blade act as the antenna? Oh, wow. That's a pretty cool idea. Um, we definitely encourage you guys to check that out. Um, we, we tend to just like, we usually don't upgrade the part or the project unless it's like a, a big worthy upgrade like the Pie Girl projects. Mm -hmm. But it's up to you guys, I think, to all take it and expand. Yeah. Code for all of the um, color change code. Yeah. Using the sensors that are out there. So check it out. Good, good comment, Danon. Next one is from Lucas. Where can I, when can I buy the kit for Pie Girl 2? Soon. Airfoop's going through a big move. They're going from um, things like the fifth floor, the third floor, to the tenth floor of a and their factory. factory building. Yeah, so all of the production is moving. Everybody's desks are being moved around. It's a ginormous endeavor. They have like these giant new reflow ovens, yeah. everybody's desk. There's like wiring, there's ethernet connections, there's um, air conditioning, there's lights, it's polishing a floors. ginormous <laughs> move. There is a big backlog of yeah. a bunch of new products I haven't put up on like, the Like, they're yet. there at the office in a box. They're in boxes. But to be kitted and, 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 and yeah, accounted they need to be for. Kitted, they need and counted, they need photography, they yeah. need to be all There's a lot of stuff of. to do. It, this is a giant We're hoping endeavor. soon, we're hoping really soon um, so yeah, again, well, we, if you follow me on Instagram, I'll, I'll, on the first day that it comes out, I'll make sure that you guys know. So, okay, and there's also there, there isn't even an email notify me link, so there's no post about it. So, all righty, so that that's the deal. That's what's going on, guys. Thank you, Lucas. Next one is from Niji on Pi Girl Two. Hi, I have been really wanting to build one of these for myself, but before I do, I have been trying to figure out how are these completely made. Do you have a tutorial on how to download the games? or a link uh, to a place that could help me, thank you. Yes, of course. There is a specific page in uploading ROMs on the, on the, on the Native Learning System, but it, it links you to RetroPie's page. Pete from RetroPie, who made RetroPie, um, gives you a nice detailed instructions on how all the different various ways and options that you can uh, upload ROMs. You, we won't tell you how to get the ROMs. We'll definitely tell you how to put them, transfer, yeah. you know, how to transfer them over. So there's quite a few different ways, and it's pretty straightforward. Thank you, Niji. I hope you uh, check out uh, making one. Mm -hmm. Next one is from Don Eduardo on last week's Hangout. Hey, guys, what is your current workflow for using Simplify 3D with the M3D, the micro? I've tried importing the G-code into the official software as well as Octoprint, but it seems like my fan and temperature settings are getting ignored. Are there some pro uh, the pre-processing settings that might be messing me up? Um, my hmm. workflow is just Simplify 3D straight to Octoprint. So definitely make sure that you have um, 0.25 of the, uh, the firmware? M3D FIO oh. plugin for uh, Octoprint. Okay. Just make sure about that. For the uh, firmware for uh, the actual M3D, and 3D. Um, crap, I didn't check before the show, but it should be. Oh, you can check the firmware right through the FIO plugin. Exactly. Yeah, you, you're able to upload the firmware that they provide you, and um, Donovan is actually working on his very own firmware for the M3D. So you can definitely try that out. And the temperature and the fan settings all work for me using Simplify 3D. I'm mean, you're, hmm. able, you're able to put in percentages like you know 50% fan speed at whatever layer that you want. Yeah. And that all works for me. So it's definitely got to be the uh, either the firmware or the um, version of the M3D5 plugin for Octoprint. So just make sure you have 0.25 on that. And okay. You should be able to get to go from there. Andrew Stout. Um let me know actually that he updated to the latest firmware using the official uh, M3D slicing software and it broke M3D FIO. So he has to 
sort of downgrade, so that might be something worth noting too. Yeah, so you should be able to downgrade to using their official firmware to just use one prior, yeah, prior, prior dot uh, version. Exactly, yeah. Okay, so um, hopefully it works out to you, but uh, let us know, and you could always um, uh, put a support, I yeah, think, in, a check support ticket. Yeah, forms, too. There's a lot of uh, chatter. GitHub or where? On M3's. Oh, okay, M3D's forms. Form. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot of people on there on um, like sharing uh, some of like 3D profiles. Oh, cool. Sharing their uh, techniques and... Um, Issues and things to, to work yeah, way through it. A lot of people are, um, uh, like Zach's walk, he's using the spooler from the official M3D software to yeah. upload his Cura. Uh, slicing settings. On Interesting. There. So okay. I'll check that out as well. All right. Well, there you go, Don. Thank you for the comment. Next one is from Steve Stephen Wade on, on Pi Girl Two. How long does the print take? The printing take. Uh, I would say it takes about four hours, depending on your slice settings. Uh, two hours for each part, maybe two and a half, depending on your your, your specifically speed settings. If you're doing uh, 90, 150, it's going to take about four hours. If you're going to do like 60, it's going to take about maybe five hours and a half or so. So it takes a little bit because they're pretty big parts. Mm -hmm. All right, so there you have it. Uh, next one is from Aiden McGugget on uh, the mini Raspberry Pi book. Uh, do you sell that case? Because I don't have a 3D printer. I always recommend people check out 3dhubs.com. Get a local maker to 3D print it and ship it for you. It supports uh, the maker, their 3D printer, their habit, <laughs> and 3D hubs as a whole. So. That's where we don't we don't sell our, our files. People actually sell our files, and that's okay. So um, just check out the various sources out there. Uh, definitely 3D Hubs and uh, even your local hacker maker space if you have one. Check it out. You might not even know you have one. Okay. Next one from Leon Michael on the NeoPixel Arcade buttons project. Does anyone know if these buttons are 30 millimeter arcade? Are they momentary or are they latching? For my specific project, they are momentary, but we also offer them in a latching. And I really like these buttons because they're really thin. They have a thin, thin profile, so you can make your enclosure nice and thin. Um, and uh, they're totally hackable. You can take them up completely apart. That's how I was able to do this project, because you can totally take them apart, take out the diffuser, put in a NeoPixel in there. Um, but yeah, we have different options. Be sure to just type in arcade buttons in the Adafruit shop, and you will find many, many buttons that even already have LEDs, like the simple ones. A lot of different options for you, Leon. The cool ones that are waterproof that have oh, that's right. already inside there. I have like a little LED ring. It's pretty cool. It's metal. Next one is from Al Bray on the spool, your 3D printed stool. Not spool, stool. Great design. I love seeing the time lapse and how it all came together. Something that really caught my eye was the custom fan shroud mount for the type the Type A Series 1 extruder to get that active cooling all the way down around the nozzle. Being a new owner of the 15 Series 1 Pro, I have had some issues with uniform active cooling printing. Um, the shipping active uh, cooling setup on the Series 1 has a majority of the print cooling hitting the printer print part from the front. Would you mind sharing your design uh, files or STLs for this custom fan shroud mount? Thank you again for all you do. Yeah. Let me pull it up on... Notice this is actually not my design. This was pulled off of Thingiverse. So this is the original one that I made before that was still only hitting one side. Yeah. But this is the other one. I should have put that one up. Yeah, so this is actually a remix of a remix. That's right. Here's the original here yeah. by E. Stevens. But this one's from uh, R. Nice. <laughs> so let me just search for the um, tag type underscore A underscore series. Right here. It's Right there, yeah. New tab. Machine. And you can see all the, the uh, modifications that have been made for the Type A machines. Yeah, so this is where you're going to get back, it. back, yeah, to that. The only thing that I actually made was instead of using this fan, or this bracket that connects the blower fan, um, I had to modify it to make to make it fit the, uh, the Series 1, the non-pro version that I have. So uh, it, it, I'll upload it as a remix just in case um, it's the other part that uh, may not work. This part, this part right, right here. here. That part did not work on mine, so I had to modify that. Is it this piece? No, it's completely different. Oh, we haven't uploaded yet. OK. Yeah. Got so it. So I'll upload it as a remix, and it's just that bracket that didn't fit on mine. But it might work on yours, because he's using a, a One Pro as well. So you might want to check this out first. Ah, I see. So ours isn't a Pro, folks. Ours is the older 2014 yeah, model. Yeah, the non-heated bed version. Yeah, so yeah. Like, yeah. OK. If you go jump back into the 
ring. Yeah, I've actually talked to them about this and told them. We did. We we chatted with uh, Stephen. They should use something like this. Yeah. And it definitely it absolutely helps. It goes totally. around all sides. A lot better than the one that it comes stocked with because it's just, it, for me, it wasn't even hitting the print until it went over it. Yeah. So, it, you know, it was causing problems. And um, the blower fan, yeah, it's just a common blower fan that you can find on Amazon. Okay. Uh, well, there I you go. Link, actually linked to that on the last post, that uh, the one that I had beforehand. What post? On the thing of first post? The thing of first Okay. Post, yeah. Anyway, we're going to have it linked below so you can get all the appropriate files and, and have your luck at it. But I hope good luck with it and let us know. Cool. Thanks, Al. And that's going to do it for the questions and for the show. If you guys want your questions answered, just be sure to drop them down in the YouTubes. doesn't matter which video, we'll eventually find them. I have to use the studio app so we'll gather all the questions up and answer them in a future episode. Okay. Good stuff, good stuff. Don't forget coupon code if you guys want to pick up a printer, fill it. Of course, the lovely assortment of awesome breakout boards and electronics that make all these projects come to life. Bath bomb. Bath bomb, which we didn't even talk about. Quickly want to go. Over <laughs> <laughs> all right, the, the, you know, stuff happens. Yeah. So one of the coolest things is that you can use PVA to make more intricate molds for this. Yeah, it's and safe. It's just Emma's Yeah. Blue. The only thing you want to do is just make sure that the shell count is just one and make design a little bit thinner. Yeah. After you mix all your ingredients, it there you go. You have a talking D20. This is, you know, my, my son Gavin loves um, bathing in these because of all the, the colors and the bubbles and all that. But all the it's definitely cool for your significant other on uh, Valentine's Day and, and any other day. <laughs> yeah. So what makes this cool is uh, instead of making like a flat 2D design, um, we're using 3D printing to make a 3D mold instead of you know having something flat and boring. Um, one of the our mall opened up uh, one of the you know those fancy um, oh fragrance you yeah. know a uh, lush we yeah, went to a lush store lush, and yeah. we saw the little robot and we we're like hey we could probably make a robot or something cool and mm -hmm. uh, we figured we'd repurpose our D20 mold our D20 project because uh, I could easily take out the numbers take out the standoffs and just make it so that we can make not just bath bombs with you know chocolates and Cookies or something. The thing that intrigued me was Soap. the dissolvable, the water dissolvable. Yeah, you wanted to try it out. Do that. So that was super cool. So if you guys um, have an awesome mold to make, you know, soaps or yeah. anything of that sort, definitely share it and we'll post it up. Um, we have about a week for Valentine's Day, so get on that if you're still looking for gifts. Cool. All right. Well, that's this week's project, and that is why bath bomb is the coupon code. Right, ten percent right. off is good until eleven fifty nine p.m. tonight. Doesn't work on software or gift certificates, but everything else, game. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll leave you off with some links. Learning, learn .com. That is where all the guides live. We have new guides every single week, so be sure to check that out. Get your learning on. Uh, every Thursday we have blog posts, uh, mainly stuff that we find on Thingiverse and the like and YouTube. What not. Some nice stories, some nice how-tos as yep. well. Yep, reviews. Um, and then, of course, you can follow me, Pedro, and Thing and Thingiverse and, and Adafruit on those social channels for some behind-the-scenes stuff of what we're working on. We have a nice assortment of shows every week. Starts off with Orbital Electronics with Becky Stern. That's right. Every week, uh, Becky has some great stuff, great projects, Fashion Forward Thinking, a Project Workshop, win some free prizes. Be sure to tune in every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. And Later then on in the evening at 7.30, we have the show and tell. Back to back. Boo, boo. We've got the show and tell, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And then full hour of Lamar and Phil, Ask an Engineer. So you can talk about, about uh, Raspberry Pi, Arduino, open source, new products, and more. Mm -hmm. Also free prizes. Trivia at the end of the show. And so get your, your question by asking an actual engineer. <laughs> Lady, from the desk of Lady Ada, we're doing an awesome contest in collaboration with Hackaday. Lamar is giving out 10, not one, but 10 Raspberry Pi Zeros. Is it three or 10? No, it's 10. Oh my god. <laughs> She's crazy. It's awesome, though. Um, this is definitely aimed towards uh, some of the beginners that uh, haven't really dabbled on uh, electronics, but maybe have heard of the Raspberry Pi. This is a great way to get the Raspberry Pi Zero, because they are sold out in the entire world. None left. Yeah, this is actually your personal stash. And you don't have to actually have a finished built project. No, this is about <laughs> ideation. Like, here's what's your plan? How good can you document it? How 
how much do you want this pie? And if uh, if the judges like it, you will get the pie, and then you can make your project. Yeah, and this actually spills over into the 2016 Hack a Day contest as well. If you don't win the uh, pie contest, you get some free cash, some or credits to the right. to the store, so you can buy other stuff, other goods. But yeah, check that out sporadically. I think have it every day. It's been happening. Every evening, yeah, somewhere around 10, 11. Yeah, late night with Lady Ada. Midnight. <coughs> yeah, mm -hmm. very fun stuff. We don't have graphic still for this week, but from the desk of Tony D as well, yeah. check out the awesome uh, programming. Uh, yeah, Raspberry Pi, Python, and more. Mm -hmm. So check, check that out, out on Twitch. All right, folks, so well, that's it. Um, thank you guys again for watching, and we'll see you next time. But until then, keep on hiking. Bye, guys.